Yesterday, PlayStation announced the PlayStation 5 Pro. And honestly, I'm in the market for a new PlayStation 5. And it's entirely of my own doing. We went on a vacation earlier this year. And we needed a little bit of extra cash when we were gone. So I kind of decided to sell pretty much all my game systems. Nintendo Switch, Xbox Series, and PlayStation 5. Knowing that I was going to rebuy them later in the year. And of course, as you can see back here, we already have a brand new right here. Xbox Series X. The box for it is down there. So it is something that has already been taken care of. But I held off on rebuying PlayStation 5 because of all the rumors swirling around about the PlayStation 5 Pro. I am a tech enthusiast. I like getting the latest and greatest stuff. I'll be getting the iPhone 16 Pro Max later this month. Uh, you know, I have a pretty beefy uh, editing slash work computer sitting over here just off camera. Uh, and, you know, I, I just have... I like having the latest and greatest. So like I'm, I'm rocking the Zelda Edition Switch OLED as an example. I like having you know, new stuff. I like being at the bleeding edge. And so when we're talking about getting a new PlayStation 5, when an upgraded significantly or at least partially more powerful system was on the way, I decided, you know what? I want to wait and see what it's all about, see what it's going to cost, see if it's worth upgrading. Because, hey, I when I revisit Spider-Man 2, I'd love to have more frame rates. I'd love to have better ray tracing. I'd love to have, you know, a clearer picture. And I'd also love for this to be the case for all future games that I buy for PlayStation 5. Even Astrobot, which I haven't bought yet because, you know, I was waiting for this announcement. Yeah, I would like to do that there. And I understand this entire conversation today. Uh, I'm a Nintendo YouTuber, right? So automatically me having criticism of anything any company does but Nintendo just makes me a blind fanboy. But I don't think that's the case this time. You see, I think Sony and what they're doing with the PlayStation 5 Pro is out of touch with reality, not a good value proposition, and they did an extremely poor job selling this system to consumers. In fact, I would go so far as to argue its potential the PlayStation 5 Pro is a scam and if it's not a scam, it's at least a massive disappointment. And this is from someone who is rocking a 4080 Super and a 14900K and a computer that's capable of kicking the crap out of whatever Sony was going to announce. I just wanted something at the bleeding edge. And I'm not so sure that Sony delivered. So in announcing this, they did some very weird decisions. And look, obviously, the big focus has been on the price point. $700 here in the U.S., uh, you don't get the uh, stand included, the stand it vertically, which a lot of people do like to stand their consoles vertically. It's all about the TV setup. Like back here, we do vertical standing here. You can see the uh, Xbox Series is standing vertically. I don't have it on its side, even though I could. So, yeah, obviously we, you know, around here I like to stand my consoles vertically. Some people have, like, different setups where it's better to go horizontal. So maybe the stand doesn't matter to you, but it's still a $30 thing that used to be included with the PlayStation 5. I had a launch day PlayStation 5. And let me tell you guys, the stand came with it. You could set it horizontal or you could stand it vertical. It came with the stand. And they redesigned it with the PlayStation 5 Slim and took it out of the box. And I, to this day, I don't understand that decision. It's a very Apple-like decision where you buy a new iPhone, like I'm going to do later this month, and you get the phone, you get the charging cable, but you don't get the power brick to actually charge it. And it's been that way this entire time. When they switched over to having to plug a USB-C cable into the wall for faster charging, you know what was funny about that? They included the charge brick for one single year. After that, they're like, oh, everybody has charge bricks. No, it was one generation of that faster charge brick. Not everyone has it. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it was just kind of a frustrating situation. That's kind of what I kind of feel like with the PlayStation 5. While you don't need the stand to use the system, it's still $30 extra. So if I want to use the system the way I want to use it, now I got to spend $730, and that's before taxes. Then we get into the fact that, this is an all digital system. And I realize I've looked at Sony's financials. I do know a vast majority of their game sales are digital. And I understand that by the time we get to PlayStation 6, it might be an all digital console. There might not be even be an option for physical, but they're charging $700 with no disc drive. And I understand that it's optional and you can buy it still and it's $80. I gotta tell you something. 
disk drives used to just be a standard inclusion in the console. We didn't consider a disk drive to be a bonus feature on the PlayStation 3 or the GameCube or the PS2 or PS1 or the PlayStation 4, the Xbox, the Dreamcast, the Xbox 360 or the Xbox Series X back here. We never viewed a disk drive as a premium bonus feature. It was just part of the system. And PlayStation's gone ahead and said, you know what? Well, before we were at least offering a, you know, a digital and a disc version, and we increased the price of the digital, so it's a $50 difference. No, 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 no. You want to turn this into a physical console? You can by paying that nice premium of $80. So if you toss that on top to get the PlayStation 5, I really want. Now this system is no longer a $700 system. It's an $800 system more than 800 actually, about $810 USD, throw on taxes and I'm spending nearly $900 to get your hand on this premium console. And look, I just explained how I have a 4080 Super, a 14900K, I have a way more expensive motherboard than I need for networking purposes. And I can understand where you might go, well, if you're willing to spend all that on a PC, what's it matter spending all this on a PlayStation 5? Fine, if I'm going to spend $900 after taxes for the PlayStation 5 I want, then it better deliver a noticeable upgradable experience. And you know what? Maybe the PlayStation 5 Pro does that. Here's the problem. I still don't know. You know what I got out of the PlayStation 5 presentation, PlayStation 5 Pro presentation, in terms of its performance? You know, a lot of games have performance mode and fidelity mode where performance mode is 60 FPS, but maybe doesn't have ray tracing or maybe the visuals are turned down a little bit. Or you can go into, obviously, fidelity mode where it runs at 30 FPS, but maybe ray tracing is turned on. Maybe there's a few other little bells and whistles. A lot of people were already having a hard time telling the difference between those two modes. And so when Mark Cerny was like 75% of users or 70% or whatever it was, choose to play in performance mode, it's because they don't really notice that big of a difference between fidelity and performance mode in the first place. So why not get them more FPS? So what I got out of the PlayStation 5 Pro presentation is, hey, now you can play in fidelity mode with 60 FPS. But the problem was most consumers, including myself, couldn't tell a massive difference between fidelity and performance mode in the first place. So it just kind of feels like we're just getting the same thing, but I guess with ray tracing. And I love ray tracing. I have a 4080 Super ray tracing is really cool. But lighting systems and engines have gotten so good outside of ray tracing that having little like extra reflections off a car don't matter to me when I'm playing. Like if I'm just going to sit there and look at a Vista, sure, ray tracing looks nice. But in the midst of gameplay, I don't notice it. It's not what I'm paying attention to because the lighting systems are already so damn good without ray tracing. And again, this isn't me saying that, you know, being anti-ray tracing. I enjoy it, and it is a benefit, but would I really pay that much more just to have ray tracing with 60 FPS? I feel like, no. I, 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 don't, I still at this point don't feel like ray tracing is a massive selling point, and that's as someone who has a 4080 Super. Not every game I have supports it, and I'm not complaining about it on PC. So um, another thing is... They had CNET come in and go hands-on. They're the only outlet as of the time of recording this video that has gone hands-on with the PlayStation 5 Pro as someone who doesn't work at Sony. And these hands-on impressions are very valuable because it's getting outside of Sony's marketing. Because I'm going to be honest, that video with YouTube compression and everything, Twitter compression, it didn't look that impressive. You couldn't really tell massive differences uh, when they were showing games side by side. So it's very important to have independent media verify claims and give us their experience. Here's the problem. CNET looked like they were reading a PR thing. And you might go, well, if this is what they truly believe, then that's just what it's going to sound like. Well, here's the problem. Sony wouldn't let them do any direct feed capture at all. Zero direct feed capture. Uh, so they couldn't show any direct feed footage. Oh, and beyond all of that, they couldn't even point the camera. According to CNET, the host of that video, they could not point the camera directly at the TV for more than a few seconds because Sony would not let them do it. Why? Well, if you notice in that video, at no point was a PlayStation 5 Pro on the set. There was no console on the set. 
if they had to plug in a direct fax, uh, capture feed, if you had to do camera pointed at the screen long enough, it might have become obvious that maybe the game wasn't running on final PlayStation 5 hardware, PlayStation 5 Pro hardware in this case, but instead was running on a PC. Very, very sketchy. Also, the fact they didn't invite Digital Foundry. Look, you're trying to sell this system based on its technical capabilities, based on Mark Cerny claiming we listened to developers. Developers wanted more power. Look, I've talked to some AAA third-party developers at EA, Ubisoft, um, Activision, and a couple other places that I have contacts at. I, I asked them um, after Mark Cerny said that. I, I texted them yesterday. To a man, and again, this can't. This doesn't represent the whole of every company. This is just my experience. To a man, all those developers said, we never asked for more power. We're not really using the power of the system as it is. That's... So who are these developers then? Th those are three of the biggest AAA developers in the world. Again, it could be other people at their company, right? Obviously, they don't speak for the whole company. But... I'm just saying that, like, my experience is the developers weren't asking for this more power. Just be honest, Mark Cerny. You made this system because the PlayStation 5 sales are, are dipping, and you knew they would dip in year four. And so you were hoping to reinvigorate the market the way PlayStation 4 Pro did. The thing is, PlayStation 4 Pro launched at the launch price of the PlayStation 5, and you just, or the play, sorry, the launch at the launch price of the PlayStation 4. But then they lowered the price of the PlayStation 4 to compensate. Instead, they've been raising the price of the PlayStation 5 twice now in Japan. They raised the price of the all-digital version worldwide, and now they just raised the price of the DualSense controller by $5 here in the United States. So Sony's raising prices, not lowering. We can argue it's due to inflation or whatever other factors, but manufacturing is supposed to get cheaper over time, not more expensive. If it's actually going in the opposite direction, then I, I suppose I could understand charging more for the PlayStation 5 Pro, or maybe... The PlayStation 5 Pro should exist, and you should just make a better value proposition for your PlayStation 5 by packing more games in with it and just making it a better overall value so consumers want to swoop in and pick it up. That's just my take, though, on that front. I was planning to buy a PlayStation 5 either way. So I have been contemplating, obviously, in the used market because you can get them cheaper, but the thing about used is you don't really get the warranty, and if it's beat up too much, like, like it, $450 versus saving $100, maybe $200, you know what, I'd almost rather have just that peace of mind that if anything went wrong with my new PlayStation 5 Slim Digital, or heck, the physical that I really want, the $500 model, uh, that I have that, that warranty. It's just a peace of mind thing. But here's the thing. I want the Pro. Uh, that's what's ironic about this video. I think it's a scam. I think it's ridiculous, and I want it. But I want it because I don't think they really showed what it can do. They didn't let Digital Foundry come in and do a tech analysis, which would have literally been the reason to bring Digital Foundry in, because if you're so confident in the technical performance of your system, Digital Foundry would independently like approve of it, which could increase sales. But I can't buy a PlayStation 5 Pro. I want to, and I can't. Because of what you're doing, Sony. You're price gouging. I talked about the $700 here really closer to 900 to have the system be the way that I want it to be. In Europe, it's already $900 USD without the stand, without the disk drive, well over 1000 if you think about it and include it. It's over 1000 if you try to have it the way I want in uh, Canada as well. Same in Australia, and I don't even want to get into Brazil pricing. It's insane. The point is that Sony has priced this system at a point that you have to honestly look at it and go, is the performance worth the price, the price to performance? And they didn't prove to me that it is. I want the bells and whistles. I want the latest and greatest. But I can't feel like I'm getting ripped off while doing it. No disk drive, that's already like a, kind of a deal breaker. No disk drive? Not that I'm not willing to buy an all-digital system, but I don't want to also support the idea that you're just cutting features and charging more. That doesn't make sense to me. You cut features. You cut the kickstand, charge more for the all-digital version in this case. You cut the kickstand, and you cut the disk drive, and you're charging more for a system that didn't even show on screen that it was worth the upgrade. It was just a bad showing all around for the PlayStation 5 Pro. And that's why I'm saying it's a scam. And if it's not a scam, a literal scam, because I guess 
they show their cards and it's up to consumers to decide if they want to buy it. They're not pulling the wool over our eyes. They showed us. And what they showed us wasn't impressive. So, in the world of diminishing returns, in the world of whatever, fine. Maybe it's not a scam. What it is, is disingenuous and greedy. Sony needs consistent competition to prevent this stuff from happening. And since we already know a pro version of the Xbox isn't coming, and even if it was, it wouldn't matter because Xbox isn't selling well. This is what happens when Sony doesn't have proper competition. Yeah, Nintendo is a competitor, but not on this front. They're not trying to compete on power. And if no other console is competing with them on power anymore, they're going to keep amplifying these prices. I really, this is why we need Xbox or at least someone else to come along and be successful in this space. So competition breeds better pricing for consumers. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojets from Nintendo Prime. Let me know what you think about all this stuff down in the comments below. I'll catch you in the next video.